Coming up on today's show, we've got part 15 of the Heinkel. This is the HE111 132nd Revel Kit. Absolute monster. We've got one more part to go on that one, so we'll be having a quick look at that one. The live show. We had the live show on Tuesday, uh, so we'll have a quick recap of the fun and games went on with that one. Meng's Ford F350. This is the 124th scale kit that's given us all those problems. Uh, part 6 went up this week, so we'll be having a look at that one. Um, there's only going to be, I think, one or two more parts up for this one, but uh, thoroughly enjoying the build. Paints. Quick look this week at paints. We've been talking recently a lot about the AK Interactive paints, so we'll be having a look at those. A couple of kit reviews for you went up this week. We had the Eddard Sherman. Uh, this is the Tusker Rebox of the amazing uh, Sherman in 135th scale. And we've got the Trumpeter's new MiG-21 UM. This is the two seat version and seeing where it fits in the marketplace. We've got some important news from the Flory Models sales side of things. So you wanna hear that one and the new hoodies are in stock. Plus all the news and gossip and some of your work. Hello, welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Good old week this week, really been pushing ahead, finishing off lots of little bits and pieces, starting new kits, which is always a fun thing. I'm not sure, maybe um, it's just me, but when you start a new kit, it's almost like a blank page, uh, but on a canvas, and you're like, right, okay, and it takes a while just to get into it again, because I've seen ages since I started an actual kit. Um, I know it hasn't been, but it's obviously been a couple of months because we've been finishing off uh, a lot of the builds recently. So obviously we had the finishing off of the tank, then came along the Heinkel finished off, and to be honest, the truck's completely finished as well now. So it seems to be a little bit odd. Um, yesterday I started on the Jaguar, and uh, it's a case of there's not much to show to be honest it's literally just going through all the motions of it uh, and it was like wow you know blank starting afresh you know clean bench and things like that so but never mind we're getting there now anyway from your point of view uh monday quite an interesting time because we actually had part 15 i do believe now are we on yeah 15 of the actual hind call that one went up for you um as i say there's one more part to come after this one which is going to finish off the build and answers a lot of the questions i've been getting about various weathering and that because i continue to talk about them afterwards. But this one, we're basically using pigments as a scrub and various things to go through. So let's have a quick look. This is gonna be one of those things, you can see we've probably got half a mil in there, and we're gonna do a 50-50 mix with Model Air. Now, I'm gonna use NATO Black again. We don't want a normal black, okay? And we're just gonna double it up, so we've got like a 50-50 mix in here. All right, and then our mixing brush gonna be in. Now the idea with using thin paint is obviously it will act a little bit like smoke. So it's not we're gonna what want to be dead on it. You're not gonna be wanna be close up, you wanna be further away and acting like soot as it comes off, all right? So for that point of view, if we just check our flow, we want it to be a bit thin so it's often a bit speckly and a bit dusty, okay? So what we're going to do is so that's throwing everything around. All right, so we're just gonna start down in here on this one. We've got the exhaust air itself, so we're just gonna put a little light spattering over the exhaust just to give it a little bit of coloring. And then we're gonna look at where we are, and we've actually got a panel line down here, and we're gonna use that as our guide, all right? So what we're gonna do is just start in flicking motions. Okay, and then once you've got a bit going on here, we can draw it back, all right? So we've got this type of thing. It looks very, very dark on the overhead cameras, but hopefully the others will be a little bit lighter. So we do the same here. Okay, and exactly the same. Got a panel line in there, roughly the same place. So what we're gonna do is just gonna come off and just gonna take it down. And the more we're going back, the more we're coming away from it, i.e. it's like a flicking technique up, so the pattern goes wider, as it would in real life, okay? It's not gonna be totally tight on here. So, so now we're just putting it in, and this you're gonna put in as much as you've got. So hopefully you can see we've got the, the staining coming off of the back there, all right? If we do this guy exactly the same, so again, right over the, the area itself, okay? Then we're starting. You can see it's almost like a rocking motion you're coming up to, so you're sort of pushing it off down. Okay, it's looking quite heavy down here, looking a little bit wet. I'm gonna come away and dry it off just a little bit. Okay, nice and dry, and then we're just gonna come along and we're just gonna put a little bit down 
just like that. And you can think about it. You can think, well, perhaps it had an engine fire, you know, and it's got a little bit more grime on one engine, on one side, whichever you want to do. Personally, I'm happy with that. So we're going to stop. As you can see, you might think that the doors will be in the way. They're not. You can actually just get around them. You can add a little bit of weathering to it because don't forget this engine of full power for takeoff, things like that. You are going to get that area. So this area again, just on there and then following that same power line. Check out flow, a little bit spitty there. So there we go. Um, as I say, there's one more part to go on that one uh, and then that will be it. As I say, kit of two halves, as I say, too big for me, but thoroughly enjoyed working on it, really, really nice. And because it's too big for me, as I said, this one is gonna be auctioned. I'm not quite sure if we're gonna do a sort of uh, a raffle for it, where you can purchase a ticket for a quid or something, uh, or we're just gonna put in a bit in with a montage, so a chance to win that particular model and some kits again. Uh, obviously, all money goes to Snap completely, uh, and you can have a chance to either win or bid on uh, that fantastic model with all the other goodies you're gonna get here with flooring models as well and I know there's a few of the other guys want to donate prizes and things like that so but this time we're not sure um, to give everybody a fair chance of it we might go along the lines of a raffle not too sure about it love to hear your thoughts please put them in the comments in the forums under this particular uh, section uh, and let us know your thoughts on it um, because I say last time it went amazingly we raised three thousand pounds doing it uh, but obviously this time you're going to have a model as well and if you are realistically in the UK as in like you know sort of four hour drive from here sort of you know an eight hour round trip I'm quite happy to deliver it as well or I say you're more than welcome to come down and pick them up like all the prices obviously if it's going abroad um, the usual thing is I might do a little bit of dismantling to it so obviously we get limited damage as it goes out so things like take the gear off take the aerials off and then obviously you can just pop them on when you get back to you but certainly Thoroughly enjoyed the final stages of getting all that weathering in, but I'm quite happy it's out the way now. It's nice working on smaller things. So anyway, last part of that's gonna go up on Monday, uh, and then obviously we'll be pushing on with the new builds after that. But as I say, if you wanna do a big bomber, that's definitely the one to do. It's got beautiful lines. It's a very sleek aircraft and everything else like that. And the differences you can do with different weathering, with different camo patterns and everything else, it lends itself to be a really good aircraft to do. Tuesday we had the live show, um, fun and games with that one because at one point the forum went down on us and me and Sid are sort of looking at each other with the sort of code language we have of like, oh shit, what are we going to do now? Uh, do we just cut off air or are we actually going to just turn around and just waffle on, which is what we normally do. Uh, but luckily it did come back. Thank you for all your questions and everything else like that. We managed to get them all to the end, dead on time after three hours. So we had a lot of fun with that one. This is it. It actually, this is it. This is pre-McDonnell Douglas when they did. But this is the kit. Now, me and Sid have a question. Well, Sid doesn't. I do, actually. <laughs> On here, it says in here quite clearly, made in Great Britain by Revel Great Britain Limited. <laughs> Cranbourne Road, Potter's Bar, Hertz, England. I didn't realise Revel had a Great Britain division. So this must be pre me, and I know you guys now will zip off on Google, but yeah, somebody on. go and find out when this kit came out. It's awful. We've got a kit number on it. Um, kit number is H110, if that helps. Well, I think that's the kit number. <laughs> but I didn't realise Rebel. Ah, look, there's a date. Go is on it? Yeah. Did just... you find out? Because it's a little bit box. Exactly right. <laughs> Rebel Inc. here. 1965. Oh, that's older than the other one I bought in the other day. Yeah, it is. This one wins our prize now for the oldest kit in the building because those ones yeah, up there are in the 70s. So there we go. This is um, obviously <laughs> a challenge. A challenge. <laughs> it is when you see what's in here um, because <laughs> it's got lovely raised riveting all over it amongst everything else, but it is pretty nasty. But this would be one of those things people will probably be look watching this now kit collectors going you can't build that probably it's a classic and the story behind that was again i don't i think this i got it off ebay yeah or i might pick it up from model model show mm -hmm. but when i got home phone i had no can canopy in it yes but I, i've had a friend that's actually give me a canopy for it so it'd be just obviously sorting out some decals for it absolutely fantastic <laughs> but yeah it's um i enjoy a challenge I'm glad you do. <laughs> Gonna have one with that. No, I must admit, it, it, the thing that just struck me though is when you brought Sid brought this one up this afternoon, and I looked at it, and it was like Revel Great Britain. I didn't realise Revel had a Great Britain division. 
uh, and all the rest of it. So there we go. That one is really odd. And it's like they don't make sellotape like that anymore, do they? <laughs> sellotape <laughs> marks on the back. You know, only old kits have those sellotape marks. They don't do it anymore. So there we go. Somebody who will rush off now and find us the history on that one. And hopefully by the end of the show, we'll know all about and it. And it says, ready to assemble plastic model kit. Absolutely. As opposed to, it's not quite ready. You're going to have to wait 20 minutes, pop it in the oven, then you can build it. Shake that little wheel. Yeah. Ta -da. That's it. As I say, if you do want to take part in the actual, any of the live shows like that, then all you've got to do is go onto the forum and post your questions in the relevant thread. Each week we have a separate thread for that and then it goes through and there's usually sort of four or five pages of questions and we just work our way through and go through them like that. It's very interactive because obviously members get involved with it as well, so if they know the answers to things we don't or they may know better, then they can post up in the forum and help all the modelers out with various links and, and things like that. Speaking of which, do have to mention, as I say, if you haven't seen the live show we have new chairs now here in the studio uh, a lot of people are asking about my old chairs that we used to have um, and saying how great they are where do we get them from and at the time I said oh yeah they're brilliant all the rest of it fortunately we've had two break in the space of a week now I'm not just saying it's me and Sid here because uh, obviously you guys come down do the airbrushing courses know all about them but it looks like they've got a design fault underneath there's a very weak um, weld uh, down underneath the way it goes through. These are a lot more sturdy. So we've got a load of these back in. Uh, we've got three of these now, uh, which are a lot stronger. These are the leather ones and all the rest of it, which are designed to swivel and do all the bits and pieces. So um, if you were thinking about a chair, then obviously I'll put the link up on next week's live show for these. Anyway, on with the truck. Um, I'm not going to lie. This thing has been a complete nightmare from start to finish don't get me wrong the fit and everything else apart from the last bit which we'll talk about in a moment um, has been no problem at all it's just the paintwork um, I've, I've got a feeling it's something to do with also with these studio lights don't forget we're sat under here under three banks of LEDs and also we've got a huge great big um, uh, daylight bulb above us these days as well um, and I've got a feeling it softens the paint slightly but needless to say we have had real problems right the way to you'll see in the video I actually put this on its roof just for a few seconds bearing in mind it's painted almost three weeks ago and it still came off on the mat so it's a bit of a nightmare handling it we had a few troubles getting the chassis to fit around the front end and all the bits and pieces like that uh, but generally the kit itself is fantastic it's just that this paint business using candy paints and ultraviolet or pearlescent paints I think I know you know you don't like to say these things but I think I know a better way of doing it and certainly from my point of view of actually um, getting this type of color I think I could do it using standard Tamiya clear blues uh, and metallics uh, rather than going through the long winded process of actually going in there with certain things as I say we went in there with silvers um, and then we went in there obviously with the candy coat then we went in with the ultraviolet wasn't happy with it it ruined my finish so then we went back so the trouble is this thing has had now coat upon coat upon coat uh, of paint and that's why I think it's taking a long time to dry that said I'm really happy with it we haven't got any orange peel um, obviously you'll see the proper pictures of this next week I haven't totally photographed it yet but I like all the chrome work on there um, and everything else. So it's been a fun, challenging build. Uh, I don't normally do cars, <laughs> as probably everyone's shouting at the screen now, because uh, I probably did it all completely wrong. But from my point of view as a, a military modeler, shall we say, uh, I took my skills of what I know and did that with it to actually you know, give us this type of effect. Perhaps it's the wrong way. Perhaps I should have used different ways of doing it, different colors and various things. But from my point of view, it's what I know. So it's what I did on this one. That said, really happy with it now. It looks great. Uh, a couple of people saw it yesterday when it was finished and they all thought it was amazing. So that's always a good thing. Uh, and generally just, you know, enjoyed the build. The build is fantastic. It hasn't put me off doing cars. I know some people on the Facebook have said to me, I bet you don't want to do a car again. Actually, I would. It was fun to do. It's that thing of like, especially at the final assembly at the end, it's great because you put the windows in it's all painted and done then you come along and obviously we put the tail in the various bits adding all the bits and pieces it's actually more like construction uh you know an assembly uh, versus modeling in a lot of ways when you get to that stage which is really really nice but generally i have to say you know meng it's a great kit it goes together absolutely lovely some of the little design features like the working bonnet i've got mine fixed to be honest to hold it in place but those little things are really really nice just we never did get any seat belts 
still think it needs a set of seat belts in there but as i said if i was to come back and do some more then obviously perhaps i'll get some aftermarket ones and put in but generally really really enjoyed it so what are you on part six if i remember rightly part six went up on uh Wednesday um, so you're gonna have I think one or two more parts for this one on but from my point of view we're all done now and it's out of the way phew <laughs> so, but yeah it's all right it got there eventually shall we say there's just a couple of bits on there that I just you know as you say I wish would have been a bit easier shall we say when it came to the painting anyway paints um, as I said, we've been using uh, the AK paints now for a couple of weeks um, and to this week I managed to get hold of the modern uh, aircraft set one which a lot of people have mentioned hasn't got a lot of the colours in. To be honest, when you look at the back it gives it all away now because it's just showing all the navy colours. So let's have a look. Okay, so you might remember a few weeks ago we actually completed the Tamiya 135th uh, scale World War One tank which came out absolutely stunning. We loved this paintwork uh, and everything else using AK uh, Interactive's new range of paints. Now originally we tested uh, these guys here which are their modulation sets which come in threes okay we're a little bit skeptical if we're honest to start with but we used them on that one had absolutely no problem and we loved them okay so then we thought about it and you know obviously things and then I started working on this lump okay and my normal uh, Vallejo model air range I was out of a couple of the colors um, don't do a lot of Luftwaffe uh, World War II stuff so I thought oh I know I know they do a new range of paints I'll have a look around and we'll see what we get Anyway, lo and behold, um, they actually do two uh, Luftwaffe sets, which are these two here, which we used. And to be honest, we used the set. Uh, I've got to remember which one we used now. Uh, did, 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 did. We used uh, this one here uh, for the actual Luftwaffe one. Uh, we've painted them, we've thinned them, we've with our normal type of uh, airbrush thinner, so we used the X20A with it, we had no problem. We also used. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Vallejo um, airbrush thinners. Okay, this is their new one I had to thin it out. We also mixed it with Tamiya paints with everybody else's paints and it worked absolutely fantastic. It gave a very nice smooth satin finish. We had no problem doing very tight camo with it. It never clogged the airbrush once or anything else like that. So that was absolutely great. Then obviously we got hold of this set, okay, which is the actual one for the uh, let me move this up as you can see uh, we've got here which is the actual RAF colors and it's great because on the back here it shows you what colors are for particular aircraft and everything else through like that so we're thinking well we've got the typhoon soon we're going to go ahead and go get one of those at the time though, the trouble is is that uh, of doing this they don't do individual sets as in you know an individual bottle of all right then this little guy came on so uh, obviously this is uh, modern aircraft one which is the new one we're looking at today so in here we've got something which is a real pain color to find okay it's fine if you've got the guns range but obviously uh, model air they don't do it Tamiya certainly got nothing particularly close to it and that is the light gold gray okay uh, but then here you've got the off-white set, you've got the radome tan, uh, the intermediate blue, light sea grey, medium grey, light ghost grey and dark grey. A lot of people at the time were saying about um, it's missing a load of colours. I think what's going to happen guys is that this particular one here is going to come out with modern aircraft set 2 and that's going to be for all the US Air Force colours because when you look on the back as you can see here this is all for the navy stuff uh, and that's why they've done it. So you've got obviously the light gold grey over that off-white uh, the Tomcat type of grey obviously the newer Tomcats use the bluey colour grey as well okay for it uh, and everything else but this is what it's all about but I thought we'd just have a quick sneak peek down into these so as we all know they come in your standard type of dropper bottles just like this they work exactly the same as Model Air if anything I think they're a little bit better I know I've said it uh, but certainly in spraying it I had no problems with it easy clean up no problem at all with standard uh, acrylic airbrush cleaner and going through and it goes a long way you can thin this quite well before you lose the all the sort of you know uh, the paint color in itself and becomes very opaque uh, so you can do things like sort of mottling uh, and bleaching and even going right the way through to giving it a, a complete wash over with it uh, to actually give it like a filter these colors work really really well but that's it but this is the new one uh, but i know a lot of people have said there's no start there's not actually a gunship gray in there 
True, there isn't a gunship grey, but I imagine we're going to be looking out for the modern aircraft set too uh, in the Air Series, and then that way I think that's going to cover that because it's going to be an F-16 type colour, uh, and I know obviously the AV-8B Harrier used it as well. But there we go, that is AK Interactive's modern aircraft colour set one. Okay, They also do the RAF uh, camouflage set, which has basically got all the World War II camo colours you're going to need in there, so that's a good one. Luftwaffe set, uh, which we've got one or two, one in my hand, which is really handy, which is really for the early part of World War II. So you've got the darker type of shades, but also you've got the ones for doing the more sort of squiggly pattern type ones, the night fighters, things like that. And then the set two, you've actually got the sort of North Africa campaign colors as well. So you've got the more stony colors and the later ones. So I'd actually say these are the more the later colors versus the, the early colors down there as you're working your way through. So there we go, that is AK Interactive Paints. We've used them, we love them. Okay, so there we go. As I was saying, I'm expecting another US Modern Aircraft Set 2 to come out, which I'm sure is gonna have the more, uh, the US Air Force colors. Uh, but as you say, I am surprised it hasn't got the gunship gray in there to do the Harrier. That's the only thing, seeing as it's got all the sort of Navy Marine colors here, I thought perhaps if they pop that in, but I'm pretty much sure you're going to come out of Modern Aircraft 2 which is going to have all those nice colours. So hopefully we're going to get things like the modern F-15 Eagle one, the Pacific colour, that's funny, the darker blue um, as well because as I say um, at the moment I think it's only extra acrylics do a really good one of that. So I say when that one comes out it'd be very interesting. As far as I'm aware you can't buy them as singles, that's the only weird thing. It'd be nice if you get them as singles because say some of these colours in here are very very nice but generally I say highly recommended. It thins as said before and mixes with everybody else's paints and have no problem at all. This week, um, yesterday, we had a couple of uh, kit reviews go up. So we've had actually the Sherman, okay, and we've got the MiG-21. Let's have a look. Four box, various sprues. We'll just flip them out of the way. And then what we'll do, we'll have a look through the instructions first. A little bit of photo etch there. Some decals. Get these out. Quite a tight box, really. And the obligatory gun, more decals down here at the bottom. Uh, what's coming out as we know. Okay, so those there. And that's a great one, we'll look at that in a moment. So, looking at the instruction sheet first, we can see usual trumpeter's way of doing things. So you've got your sprue uh, and part call out like that. Then we're in here, as we can see, we get a nice uh, full-size engine as well. So starting with the nose wheel well, probably not gonna put the gear in yet, as we know. Putting the engine together, the seats, um, some very nice systems going down there for the seats, both the seats, front and rear cockpit. The actual nose, uh, the radar itself uh, in the actual intake. So looking at the plastic just off the bat, hopefully you can see it here as well. We've got some very nice detail on this. Hopefully the closer camera will show. You can see very nice, very crisp, recessed panel lining absolutely everywhere. The hatch doors and latches look pretty good. As you can see, you've got some very nice details on the underside here. All this work on the inside of the bays, very nice, very sharp. That's what we were looking at. All you can see on the box, very nice box art, as you can see. And it adds a standard type of way of doing things. So you've got your kit number, which is 3716, showing you some of the different markings you'll be able to get. But one piece molded upper hull, um, some very nice texture in there. It looks like it's what it is, which is actually molded in, and then hopefully at different angles uh, with the close-ups and things like that. Hopefully you can see, very nicely done, very nice moulding, no problems with that at all anywhere. Let's say it's just the texture it's got, actually does look like cast, uh, as in real life it's actually been wow. cast. Uh, there's no release A agent on this one at all. Uh, generally all the ejector pins as well, very very low flush with the plastic, they're not protruding or particularly overly sunk. They're all out of the way as well, so you've got no problem with that. Even these very small parts, as you can probably see, down here, um, very crispy. So there you go, um, as I say, the full review is below here if you're looking on the main site or they are in the kit review section. Funny enough, after I did this, did a little bit more homework on this one um, and I did a little bit of a thing. The MiG-21 in 148 scale, you've really got three options. Uh, you've got the Academy kit, which was is the old school version if you like. Okay, by today's standards, it's not up there, but it's still a very good kit. And if you're thinking on a budget, there are recommended retails about 20 quid. You can pick them up even cheaper. I've seen them as low as 10 before in certain sales. The 
trumpeter one, this one is mid-range. So this is 25 quid for this particular kit. And as I said, it, it really is nice. Your other option is obviously the Eddard version uh, of their MIGs and they do all the different ranges. Um, and pretty much on par with this particular kit but it's another £10 so it's £35 but really for a 148 scale modern kit I think that's a good price and I do like this one and it's nice that they've come out with the UM one first because they being the two seater you don't see that so it gives you plenty of options and things but we do know that the single seater one is coming out soon as well so you know no doubt they're going to fill in the gap and there's going to be lots of different ones coming along with that one. The other kit obviously we looked at was the Sherman. Um, as I said, we know it's the Tusker kit with all the different bits and pieces that go in with that one. Like I said, apparently it is the best of its thing. Um, and the price on that one is gonna be 35 pound as well. So not too bad, it's not gonna break the bank really for what is a top of the range Sherman kit. So all in all, pretty good. Okay, so in the forum, absolutely fantastic work. The group builds and the SIGs are doing amazing. A real buzz going around the forum at the moment. Your work is truly stunning. We'll be having a look in depth next week at some of that. Do have to mention the medals are half, well, more than half, I was gonna say, probably around about 70% of them have gone out and are done, okay, and on their way to you. Uh, the others are on slight hold because I've run out of the black badges. They are coming, they were ordered, uh, and I was assured they'll be here, well, beginning of the week. Still waiting on them, I've been told they'll be here today if they are literally all i've got to do is pop them into the jiffy bag that they're all coming through so you're going to get the sticker the black badge and your medal but they should be coming to you within the next week okay so they'll go out obviously today if they're here if not they go out on monday so apologies for that prize winners to be honest yours is all going out today the reason they didn't is because as you may have noticed i've reviewed them all <laughs> so that's why they're all going to have slightly open bags all right but thank you guys uh but there so all on their way to you well done uh, but as i say the the buzz going on the forum at the moment with all the different group builds and the various things going on is absolutely fantastic uh, right, got to mention, um, the hoodies, which I'm wearing now, dun, 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 this is what this is, which is very nice and warm, you see, and everything else, and it, it has got the the name on the back and all the rest of it. They are available now in all the sizes. We don't do a small, because small is really is quite small. Uh, so we do a medium, uh, large, extra large, and 2XL. 2XL is very generous as well. So that covers all the sizes. They're 25 pound, they're available in the store at the moment, okay, so you can get and go and get those now. Do have to mention uh, from the sales team that as of now, basically, uh, that we are not having stockists stock the wash, okay? They're not having worldwide distributors anymore or anything else. Um, they're having, basically, gonna have the site um, store as we have it on our bit here, with everything that goes on down there and the new products coming out, they're gonna be on there as well. And they're gonna be having their own store as well, okay? So, but if you see the washes now for sale in various places, that's gonna be the end of it. Um, you know, obviously they do have a plan for all of this uh, and the various bits and pieces and most of it draws down to bringing you the best possible price on the products. Uh, so it's not going through other people. That seems to be the, the concises of their opinion. So uh, technically, if you see our washes for sale now, anywhere else in the world, that's the end of the stock. Um, nobody else is gonna have them. If you want them, you're gonna have to come direct. So there we go. So that goes with the same with all the merchandise and everything else like that. Do have to mention as well, between you, me and the gatepost, if you want the new stickers, don't buy the old sticker set this week because that's the last of them going out this week. If you want the old style stickers with the car sticker and the flooring models in the red one, things like that, like this one, um, you know, buy them now because next week we've got the new ones coming out. They are 150 mil by 150 mil and it's all three girls. So you're gonna get the Flory Sander girl, they're all gonna be black background ones, the wash one and the standard one is gonna be in the set that's coming out soon. Okay, so they're bigger gloss vinyl ones. Um, they're not here at the moment, apparently they're being delivered this afternoon. So, um, but that's gonna be changing over as well. So if you are after those, those will be coming along and no doubt they'll make their way out to be prizes and gifts and everything else. So lots of those things coming out. Right, so that is about it for this week. As I say, plenty for you to see on the site and go on with. We've got the live show back on Tuesday. Next week, I've got some cracking reviews. I don't know if you can see them down there, but down at the bottom, we've got the Tram A6 Intruder. Um, yes. It's the one I wanted. I've done the A version, opened up. At some point, I'm going to come back and do that one in flight. Uh, I've got the Scud B, that giant kit down there from Trumpeter as well, the 135th scale. We've also got, which is what you're voting on at the moment, the review coming up for the Bradley. This is the M3A3. 
uh, with the uh, Busk 3 system on it. And also we've got Eddard's, which is probably one of their best ones to date. Uh, this is the Starfighter with all the brass in and the various bits and pieces and their decals, which is obviously it's the best kit in its scale. I think it's the only one actually, uh, but certainly the decent one. So it's the Hasegawa kit been reboxed and everything else. So you've got the best kit with all the best aftermarket bits as well. So those reviews will be coming out next week as well as we've got other reviews still to get through because I've got a pile of review work to do. But then next week I'm going to be cracking on very nicely with the EZ8 and with the Jaguar. And then I'm going to be making a start on to the actual Typhoon as well. So there we go. So loads for you to see, loads for you to do and everything else like that. And I'll catch you all in the forum. So till next week, I'm going to leave you with Aaron Scott's amazing 132nd MiG-3 in its bare scheme. I can't call it a scheme. It's just bare. It's obviously just metal and wood. So it's using amazing um, wood decals to give that amazing effect as well. So Aaron did a truly amazing job on that. So I'm going to leave you with that. So until next week, everybody, happy modeling and take care.